Hello and welcome to this new video on my DIY remote control surface. I'm publishing this video as a very short update after a quite a long time. Uh, uh, you know, we had in the middle the Christmas holidays and on top of this I stumbled uh, into some issue that I was not expecting, which I will talk about uh, in, a, in a moment. Um, before to start with these uh, updates, I would like to uh, kindly ask you to subscribe to the channel, to hit the bell and give a thumbs up to the video if you like it. As usual, this is very important for me. As you can see here, we have uh, uh, an implementation of a custom board. Uh, for the ST, uh, uh, stm 32 h which is the MCU which I recently decided to start working on. If you, have, if you are following my channel, you know from previous video that I was originally working on the microchip Atmel platform with the uh, SAM E70 uh, Cortex-M7 based MCU uh, from microchip Atmel. At a given moment, I crossed the path with this little beast and I really uh, found this MCU very interesting, as I was saying in another video, from uh, the perspective of the peripheral that is uh, making available. By the way, this chip is making available 10 UART USART peripheral. Actually, it's 11 because there is also uh, a low power one, which is a quite an unicum on the market. Uh, and that was very important for my project. And on top of this, this MCU clock at 550 megahertz. So it's a quite powerful one, which made my development uh, definitely more uh, easy and comfortable. Uh, as I was saying in another video, it was not easy to find uh, the MCU uh, because of the shortage, uh, the chip shortage, as you know, which is still uh, it in the market uh, nowadays, maybe also because uh, it's a quite recent MCU, I don't know. Finally, I found uh, the under 44 leads uh, packet, that is the one that you are seeing, which is the same one that is on the, um, mounted on the Nucleo board. Even if that was not really the package that I was uh, aiming for, I decided to stop the prototypation with the E70 and uh, to restart with this MCU. It was not uh, easy, I would say substantially impossible to find an adapter that was bringing the under 44 leads uh, to the uh, DIP breadboard format. So at the end of the day, I end up in designing uh, the adapter myself and make it produced by uh, a market manufacturer. This is a format that I like a lot. I like a lot to work on the breadboard, so I don't like so much to use uh, uh, other formats which are already uh, present into the market, such as this one. Um, the, the good of this is that it's already present and available on the market and is also quite cheap to buy if you buy it from uh, AliExpress, for instance. Uh, the bad of it is that uh, 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 you, you see, I mean, uh, substantially what you end up in doing is to have the, the four sides of the uh, MCU with two lines of uh, 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 headers, of pins, uh, which, you know, at the end of the day brings you to make something which is full of uh, uh, lines going from ears, especially if you are implementing the wall uh, 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 MCU GPIO set, uh, uh, which makes things a little bit complicated to work and then to read when you are doing the prototypation. Thanks to this format, I find that it's much easier. Everything is set in two straight lines of, uh, of, uh, um, of pins. And especially, as you can see, I've managed to uh, uh, a name to number and to name every pin, which is very, very important during the prototypation because in a, in a less than a second you can really see where things are and you can easily connect uh, uh, to things. The PCB you are seeing, I had it produced by uh, a market manufacturer named uh, uh, Old PCB, which is one of the uh, bigger manufacturer on the market. I had a very good experience in uh, ordering the PCB. The process is always the same. I mean, you produce your Gerber file, you go to the site, you can upload uh, the site and get in immediately a quotation depending on the size of your PCB, depending on uh, the specificities of your PCB and the number of the PCBs that you are ordering. I had it produced really, really fastly. In, I think, in 24 hours, they were ready. 
and in the following 12 they were sent which is really uh, good as usual the process of the shipping uh, was a little bit uh, uh, long but uh, from china but you know this is the same for all uh, the market uh, uh, manufacturer the pcb is really good quality uh, i didn't have any single uh, issue with it yeah and generally speaking i would say that i had a very good experience uh, with them so let's go a little bit into details of uh, what is this uh, first implementation that I did. As usual, you've seen it already in the other uh, custom board video that I posted. The first thing to do is to set up the power uh, lines of the MCU. Uh, in the case of the STM32A723, it was a little bit complicated thing. I have to say that uh, I used a lot uh, the uh, schematics of the nucleo board in order to get information and in order to accelerate especially the, the process of settling up and I can tell you that at the very start the things didn't went very well I still don't know if it was me uh, making a, a mess or if it, there was any issue uh, but uh, uh, I had problems and this is one of the reasons why it took a little bit of time for me to publish uh, a new video in order to program, I use uh, this uh, uh, programmer debugger. This is a Chinese clone of the ST-Link V2. I think I paid 10 euros and I bought it, I don't know, three years ago. I wasn't sure if uh, uh, that was good enough uh, to start working with, the, with such a, rich, a recent uh, uh, MCU. But then I have to say that things uh, uh, work, as you can see. There you go, I can connect. This is the address for the uh, uh, user application memory. Uh, uh, and this is the program that is currently inside uh, uh, the MCU. So now I can correctly uh, see the memory, I can program, I can debug. In terms of the implementation, uh, uh, I made the usual basic implementation to start. As usual you see here the power LED this is the LED that I power up just to signal that the uh, 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 um, MCU is working is up uh, then you see here another LED which I call heartbeat which is an LED which is pulsing every second which is connected to a, a, a timer counter inside the MCU if you have seen my previous video of custom bird setup uh, uh, you know that I'm doing this in order to be sure that the MCU is correctly working. Um, the setup uh, of the uh, uh, of the um, decoupled capacitor here and here it's quite complicated, as you can as you can guess. Uh, but again, it, it, it's enough to check the, the schematics of the nuclear board, and you got all the information that you need. Here in in brown, I have set up as usual my reset button. If I click, I can reset uh, the. Um, and the MCU. Uh, another important lead is here. This is called the boot zero. This lead, depending if you put it on ground or if you put it on uh, on VDD, uh, 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 you can decide to boot from the uh, uh, memory here, which is the user application memory, or the other set of memory, which is this one, which is the uh, uh, system memory. This is very well visible here. Here you have all the uh, uh, fuse con configuration for the MCU. Uh, and if you check in the boot address option, you see this is the user application based, uh, sorry, this is the user application based uh, um, uh, memory. And you see boot is equal to zero. So it's connected to ground as it is in fact right now. Uh, and this is the system memory address and boot is equal to one so if you connect it to uh, VDD I think that this is quite interesting and useful uh, other things important are the two crystal oscillator the uh, ST32 STM32 H723 has built it inside uh, already uh, an high speed uh, uh, oscillator and a low speed one so high speed I think it's 48 megahertz and uh, low speed is the usual 32k uh, uh, oscillator however I decide to put the external one which because usually are more uh, uh, reliable and also because uh, when you set up USB as you will see in a moment 
uh, it's absolutely mandatory to have uh, an external one clocking in order to give the precision that is needed to the USB thing uh, to work. Here you have the USB uh, implementation, here you have the USB cable. This LED is signaling that the VBUS is, uh, 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 is powered. Here in red it's a voltage divider circuit to bring the, the 5 volts coming from the USB to 3.2 volts uh, 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 in order to feed uh, uh, the, um, uh, the VBUS sensible uh, uh, pin uh, inside the MCU and in order to be informed that the uh, USB uh, connection is set. Finally I have set up here you see in the green area uh, an ESD uh, uh, IC. Uh, this is an IC which is protecting the two lines D plus and D minus of the USB from uh, um, uh, electromagnetic uh, uh, interference. Uh, when you work on the USB is always a, a good idea to put it in. But that's it. Next I will reconnect all the system in order to verify that everything is working and if everything will be working I will add the last slider that it was missing which is the uh, master one that it was not possible to implement inside the nucleo because unfortunately the line of the UART4 which is the one that I used for the master uh, was uh, 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 also connected uh, to the programmer debugger inside the, uh, the, the nucleo board and it was creating uh, disturbance probably there was there is a way I suppose to to tweak it inside the, the prototyping board but I didn't find it so who cares anyway I'm making my implementation so it shouldn't be it shouldn't be a problem uh, that's it so thank you very much as usual and I see you in the next uh, chapter thank you bye